So let's go ahead and talk Battlefield 2042. It's been a while since I played this game, and I like to come back from time to time, usually sometime in one of the seasons, to see if the game's gotten significantly better or worse. Recall I bought this game at launch, and like many other people, I was thoroughly disappointed, which unfortunately is kind of the cycle for Battlefield games. There's always that glimmer of hope that they're finally going to be able to figure it out and do it right. This was not that time. And a lot of this game really focused around this really dopey hero-based system that you see in a lot of hero-based shooters. Probably Overwatch is the most famous of them. But the idea was that your loadouts and your gameplay was really tied to these very defined character classes. And that created a lot of problems for a lot of different reasons. And the system has been revamped significantly since that time. So now we actually have the ability to pick pretty much any weapon and for the most part a pretty good kit for any character that we're playing although the true class system that was so expertly designed and refined in battlefield 4 is still ultimately lacking here i also find that a lot of this game doesn't really emphasize squad gameplay as much as zerging into a target and by that i mean that while there are synergies that can be um, worked if you are playing as a well-coordinated squad because of how this game works out and because it's trying to be somewhat arcadey and somewhat realistic at the same time the balance ultimately doesn't lie necessarily in squad-based performance but much more in individual gameplay something that we didn't really see in other battlefields in the past so i'm playing this on playstation 5 um, i got this because it was free thanks to PlayStation Plus, although I do own it, as I mentioned, on PC. But I was sitting upstairs on my nice comfy couch with my DualSense uh, Edge controller, and I was just jamming out and having a blast. And I figured, hey, let's jump over and see if Battlefield's gotten significantly better. I'm going to play this entire match um, for you and narrate over it as I'm playing through it. But I want to say that when I finished this match... I was very aware that this game is played out in very, very distinct phases. And that goes back to this Zerg mentality. So on this particular map, as with most maps, this conquest idea, the points that you want to capture first and foremost are in the center. If you're not fast enough to get a vehicle for whatever reason, or in my case, selecting one and it doesn't seem to go through or whatever happens, you kind of got to wait for the first 45 seconds or so for your teammates to drive over to the middle point so you can spawn on either a squad mate or a captured point, which is going to allow you to actually get into the combat. If you don't do that, you're gonna spend a very, very, very long time running to where you need to get to so that you can, um, you know, get into the fight. Because if you run over to like your A point or, you know, your D point, whatever your closest, like your natural expansion is, it's going to be pretty boring and it's not going to make for a very good video and it's not going to make for a very fun game. So the middle point has to be the point where you're at. But again, because of the way the stupid system works, if you're not one of the first people on the ground, you're going to have to wait out for a little bit to establish. Now, what you're seeing happening here on Bravo 2 at the top of the screen, we have 12 players defending this point to a paltry two players on the enemy side that are trying to engage. And despite this, you saw and you will see time and time again, I'm constantly getting blasted from a blind spot, which is very odd to me that there are so many other players here. But for some reason, I must have Donkey Kong mode on because I got a big old noggin that everybody loves to fill with bullets. And this happens so often in this game. You're either going to be playing in a just insane advantage like we kind of are now, where I have the basically the entire force standing around me in unison, creating this defensive perimeter of fire and uh, just mortars and tanks and everything around me to keep me safe. Or you're going to be on the cutting edge of attacking and you're going to be experiencing the exact same thing, but inversed. You're going to be feeling those pain points of getting lit up from multiple places. And that's why I go back to this game of it's kind of confusing if this is meant to be a run and gun or a strategy game. Because in some instances, I get killed from players running and gunning. And in some instances, just the natural zerging of a team, not really any coordination per se, ultimately wins the battle. 
And that balance is very hard to really pinpoint at any specific time in this game. And it's very hard, especially, to figure out what phase of the game you're in. So this beginning, we are already at a 100 ticket disadvantage. We're gonna lose this game, by the way. Um, pretty soundly, actually, despite me doing my best effort to try to defend points that, I, that we naturally hold as our own, playing as a recon. Now, I like recon the most. I do dabble sometimes with Boris and his trusted sentry gun, although I find that it's not very consistent. And the idea of an AI shooting for me sounds amazing on paper because it allows me to have a natural cover to my blind spot or to allow me to focus fire on a very specific area. But in practice, I find the sentry gun doesn't really work that well and usually gives your position away much more than it actually helps to fortify your position. So I've kind of backed off from that and I do stick back to recon specifically for the tugs. And you see me planting the tugs constantly, which is basically like a mini UAV, which beams around me constantly and is giving me the location of enemies. And I'm using this to my advantage. And as I am actually playing these matches, I'm very, very infrequently looking at the screen in the upper right and instead focusing on the map on the lower left, because I know with a great degree of clarity exactly where the enemies are and where I need to focus my fire. And this works very, very well because this game has so many places to hide, so many places to sneak around, whether it's bushes or trees or burnt out vehicles. There are just so many natural view things in your field of view that are wiggling and moving that are going to give you this false positive that either you're safe or that you're not safe and you're about to get smoked and you don't even see it coming. So. I find that camping still works best in a battlefield game, and I think this has been true of any battlefield game. And if I had to guess, despite the litany of technical issues and bad press and some of the nonsensical decisions that were made at the launch of this game, if I had to venture a guess, I would say that the reason modern warfare is so much more successful, particularly in Warzone or in the ground war, which is a basic competitor to this, it's because Warzone feels so much more responsive and Warzone is very consistent in what it's trying to be. It's definitely over the top arcade, run, gun, slide, dolphin dive your way to victory. Here in Battlefield, it seems to maintain this identity crisis of whether or not it wants to be a game that is gonna focus on, you know, you kind of hunkering down, setting up turrets and natural defense points, having, you know, good position on your armor behind infantry so they can kind of do mortar shots over your head while you're marking out targets. And then sometimes it seems to, as you've seen already numerous times and you'll continue to see here, guys just running around wildly with SMGs or whatever the flavor of the month gun is. I don't even know, I'm so out of this game. Um, and just single-handedly dominating your forces without really much, uh, you know, uh, really not much you can do about that. And that's where I struggle with this game. And it does look pretty and it does play well. And I wish it was 120 frames a second. Um, I think that's something that is a kind of oversight, especially in today's competitive first person shooter space. Um, the fact that this game caps out at 60 is very, very frustrating. And the fact that you don't even have an option to play with that, it just is. Now it looks amazing in HDR and the, the pinnacle of sound design, honestly, is in this game. I have maintained for a very long time that Battlefield games are the absolute best when it comes to sound design. And I don't necessarily just mean from the fact that your guns have a very distinct sound to them and you know a specific rapport as you kind of play out in the, in the field, but just the way that your guns echo in the distance and the way that there's no simulated gunfire being injected into the game. Everything you hear is from another player. And it does create this really cool warlike sense, especially when you're down in the trenches and you're hearing the big bombs of tanks and airplanes and helicopters flying over you. It does create a very immersive experience, which I really, really appreciate. But the problem is this game still focuses on that over reliance of armor. And that's something that I just have such a struggle with. And by the way, when I mean armor, I'm not talking about putting the little chest plates in your body. I'm talking about tanks, I'm talking about labs, I'm talking about Hummers or um, uh, Hovercraft or any of the other big vehicles in this game. They are basically unstoppable. 
you would have to coordinate three or four players simultaneously to shoot all of your uh, recoilless rockets at a tank simultaneously for any real chance of destroying it. Anything short of that, they're going to take a shot or two, most likely drive away. A lot of them have like a self-repair ability or somebody who's, you know, a buddy in the back who's going to jump out and just shoot a little blowtorch and then you're going to get back in and keep going. Vehicles take an insane amount of punish in this game and it's something that was plaguing it from the beginning and it still exists today. A player who is in a tank who is very familiar with the map and the gameplay will absolutely dominate in this game 100% of the time. And it's beyond aggravating to me that despite all of the efforts that players do to try to stop tanks, running up to them with C4, hitting them with recoilless M5 rockets, other tanks attacking them, it seems like they're in a class of their own. So if you really want to just get those min-max numbers and you want to just be dominating, get a tank. I promise you, you don't even have to be good at this game. And as long as you're not an idiot and drive right in the middle of the town that the enemy is holding and you kind of play in the periphery of the points you own, you most likely will never die and you will get so many kills, it's stupid. And unfortunately, that still exists in this game. That mechanic still exists today and it does kind of break some of the experience. Um, as I've been talking though, I think you've noticed something, a pattern that's forming in my gameplay. And this happens in pretty much every single map in Battlefield 2042. We are now in a different phase of the game. We clearly were holding the B points. We had way more people than they did. Recall that we had like 13 or 14 players in the point as opposed to one or two of the enemy player. Well, everybody scattered and decided to go do their own things. And despite the fact that on the map, and you'll see it next time I die, which will be pretty frequently, despite the fact that we have this nice U-shaped platform, basically, and we're defending everything around the B point, our forces are spread far too thin and the enemy is still gonna win seemingly gonna win by the way which is just aggravating that despite the fact that we are playing the territory game as we're supposed to be we're still burning tickets way faster that's something the game makes very very clear at the beginning while you can ping an enemy down with shooting them battles are won and lost on territories well we were holding a lot of the territories and guess what we've never been in the lead and it's gonna continue, you'll see this. Just keep watching those numbers, those, there are those letters on the bottom, keep watching those numbers just tick down. Um, so you're, we're in this phase of the game now where we're on the offense. And I don't know how this happens, it was an organic thing where we were basically in a great defensive place, we were holding off the enemy, I think I had five or six kills, I was getting resurrected by medics, we had, I had a tug set up, we had tanks driving around, we had uh, Boris with his sentry gun scattered around the place. I think we pretty soundly had the B point on lockdown, which was great. Unfortunately, what ended up happening was we scattered. Now we're on the offense, and this is where the game really starts to get hard because I'm just one person. And you'll see me doing a lot of like, I'm gonna run in there and fight, and I die. Well, I'm going to hang back here and kind of be support, and I'm going to set up my little recon, my little tug zone. I'm going to set in a, recoin, uh, a re recon point for, uh, you know, where we can have our teammates spawn in, so we'll have like a natural beachhead. We're going to begin to form an, an offensive coming in from this side. That doesn't really pan out. Um, what ultimately devolves into is everybody just running up into the wall and just getting mowed down after time, after time, after time. I eventually do that myself because I don't know what else to do because I'm just kind of tired of waiting around. And it's these phases of the game that just really hurt it. Now, this isn't necessarily a fault of Battlefield 2042, particularly in the flow of the game. There's not really a whole lot that they could do differently here, except maybe change how the scoring actually works maybe incentivize the um, points much more than they are. I don't really know, but you have this kind of tug of war internal to the game where players are playing the game differently, which is expected, but you're not really feeling rewarded for making bold decisions as much so as you feel like you're being punished when you're trying to do the right thing and nobody else on your team wants to. If this is gonna be some sort of realistic strategy game where we're going to basically build up squads of armies and we're gonna have different types of vehicles that have some logistical considerations like repairing or medic or you know medics that have to revive teammates or 
uh, soldiers who are going to bring in bullets for, you know, the army to continue to press forward. That's awesome. Reward us for that. But I never really feel like we get that reward. And I feel like it's constantly, you're, you're, you never really feel content in what you're doing because things just happen so fast when they want to. And then things happen so painfully slow when they don't want to. You see it a lot in the respawn system as well. And that's another part of the game that just aggravates me beyond belief. I cannot tell you the number of times that we have been holding a point and I click on it to spawn into that point. And it spawns me 75 to 100 meters away from the point. Sometimes right in the middle of enemy fire. I mean, literally I will spawn in and die almost instantly because I'm being shot from the very second I spawn in, which is just baffling and bizarre. However, enemies will spawn in literally in front of you, seemingly out of thin air. And of course, you know, usually they get the upper hand on you because they're standing like right behind you or right next to you and you don't even see them. It's got that kind of cyberpunk feel where enemies are just spawning out of nowhere and you're like, wait a minute, why are you here? How did you get here? Um, you never really feel ultimately safe and that unless you're inside a building. And that's what kind of makes this game challenging. So it's not to say that I'm a great player because I mean, I feel like I'm a decent first person shooter player. I mean, I know the general idea of tactics and strategy and kind of where to stand in position and how to get natural cover and defilade a lot of this stuff. I refined with my boy Kevin when we played hours upon hours of PUBG, just understanding just situationally where to stand and where to shoot and where to engage. And, and that definitely holds true for this game. But there are so many instances where you just get killed and you just can't help but feel like, oh, this is just bullcrap. You know, like this is just not fun right now. What's happening right now is just not fun. And I don't like that this system exists sometimes. So how can they fix Battlefield? How can this game be more fun? Well, I think they've done a really good job of fixing a lot of the weird game breaking bugs. That's definitely something that I see has kind of been improved because ultimately when this game first came out, um, there were a lot of game breaking bugs and a lot of that's been fixed. You're not seeing characters fly away in the air or hovercraft drive up on the side of buildings or tanks doing weird physical things. I mean, you still see it sometimes, and that's to be expected. They've fixed that, but what they really need to fix in this game is what they want this game to be. I can't hammer that point home more enough than I already have been. This game struggles very, very much so with its identity. And despite playing the map the way we're meant to be playing the map and holding territories, and constantly trying to be on the advantage or at nothing else a stalemate where we are kind of positionally to other enemies we are still losing we are soundly losing now me spawning in and getting mowed down literally the second i spawn in because apparently enemies are camping every natural spawn point in this game i don't know um despite me doing that i do turn it around at some point and i do have a little rally here and there but despite all of that we're still losing so I am not being incentivized for holding the point. I've been basically inside of the B point this entire game, constantly talk, you know, you're constantly seeing a score pop up telling me that I'm, you know, supporting the point because I'm standing inside there. I'm defending it against the enemies who are trying to recapture it from us. I'm, I'm sitting here, I, I'm playing that part of it. We're losing again. And why? <laughs> why? I don't know why. <laughs> That's what I don't understand. So I can't be incentivized for playing the game you want me to play. I can't be incentivized for being run and gun. And the games usually become very lopsided because you have a lot of players who are like, well, I guess I'm not doing that because that doesn't work anymore. Vice other players who go, well, you know what? This is absolutely the way we need to play. This is absolutely, you know, how we're supposed to win. And I look back at kind of how the, we got to this point and I feel like it just shows the, the core of this game was built on some very odd design choices. It was designed on a hero-based shooter, which doesn't really apply to a war strategy game. Yet, that was something that they felt was important at the time. You're absolutely, uh, you're, you're, I wouldn't say overloaded with gadgets and gizmos that are specialized to each character, but they don't always necessarily feel balanced. I think some characters are basically gods in this game, like the character with the wingsuit who can basically fly anywhere. Definitely a little broken movement mechanic there. 
Boris's turret doesn't really seem all that well. Um, you know, it doesn't really seem to hold defensive points like it should. If you're supposed to be a de defensive character, you should have some sort of buff or something that allows you to be more defensive. Especially when you're laying next to your turret in the middle of nowhere just patiently waiting for something to happen. You have recon characters who can seemingly press a button and scan the whole battlefield around them and pinpoint every single enemy on the map. It's just a lot of choices that I'm like, wait, why did we even go down this road? And despite, you know, Battlefield really trying their hardest to try to remove some of those elements over the years, I don't really quite think they've mastered that yet. And I don't know if that if this game could even be fixed, quote unquote, until all of those systems are removed. But they've invested so much time in the skins and in the little charms and in the, you know, the different cosmetics that it's hard to now divorce themselves from so smart and solid design choices. I don't know if I would re recommend Battlefield. I still think Modern Warfare does it better. I think that Ground War does it better. I think older iterations of Battlefield still do it better. That's not to say this game is horrible and can't be played or enjoyed in any capacity. I played for about three hours and I had fun on and off doing it. Obviously, I was listening to music and talking to my wife, and I wasn't always completely focused in the gameplay, but I had fun with it. I mean, it being free helped a lot, but it runs well enough, and if you're looking for a shooter and you don't have one, I mean, you should by now, but if you're not into Halo, if you're not into Modern Warfare, if you're not into Apex Legends, if you're not into PUBG, if you're not into Fortnite and you're just looking for something, I mean, free is a pretty good deal, especially on PlayStation right now, and it runs well, but... I don't know if this is like a forever game for people, and that's what really kind of bums me out. I feel like, for me, Modern Warfare is a comfort food. Halo is a comfort food. It's one that I love to go back to time and time and time again, and I can have fun with it, and I understand what the game's trying to be. And for the most part, and not to say either of those games are perfect by any stretch, but they're somewhat consistent in their experience. Here, this game has swung so wildly. I've been talking for about 22 minutes now. Look at how wild this game has gone from insane domination to insane getting destroyed to now going off to some random point and capturing. I don't think I die anymore after this, by the way, maybe once. Uh, it's just like such a wild swing. Oh, and look at that score again. Yep, despite the fact that we're holding all these points, despite the fact that kind of A and E are at a stalemate, we have two points up on them. Just watch the ticks and look what happens. Look at how much faster our score is ticking than the enemy's score. I mean, yes. There are individual performers here. There are people who are playing better than others. There are characters who are definitely killing machines as opposed to others. And you'll see that reflected in the score. But what is the point of this if you're not playing the game the way you're supposed to play? What is the way you're supposed to play this game? It doesn't make any sense. So it's hard to invest in this when the system is flawed, the characters are flawed, and ultimately the win conditions remain flawed. And that's why to me, a game like this just has a hard time existing in the first person shooter space in a space where halo knows what it wants to be modern warfare knows what it wants to be and while you may agree or disagree with some of those decisions it consistently delivers on those promises now whether you like them or not obviously that's up to you to decide but you know what you're getting into in this game i can never quite tell what i'm supposed to be doing am i supposed to be infiltrating points Having three points now to the enemy zero points, is that how we're supposed to win? Well, watch the score and tell me what happens. So it's just one of these things that's just so baffling to me. Um, I'll wrap it up by saying this. I hope every single time that a new Battlefield game is announced or that a new Battlefield game comes out, they're going to quote unquote fix it. I thought that in Battlefield 1. I thought that in Battlefield 5. I thought that in Battlefield Hardline. I thought that in Battlefield 2042. Every single time these games come out, they have a just such a Herculean task of winning back an audience that they almost instantly piss off <laughs> every single time. And they never get it done right. Go look at the Steam charts of this game. Look at how many people are playing. Look at how many people are talking about it. It's a fraction of what it should be. What the core Battlefield experience was that was so expertly crafted in Battlefield 3 and in Battlefield 4 is absolutely lost here. And until they can figure out what they think this game should be, well, we're gonna have games like this where nobody seems to know what's going on and you're either gonna be on a dominating team or a losing team and you probably won't even know why. 
That wraps up my long thoughts on Battlefield 2042, at least the 2023 edition. I'll probably revisit this game again next year or in a couple months and do another proper video on it and see if it's changed. But for now, based on the experience that I have seen, I say it's a eh experience. Go find a shooter that's your daily driver because I don't think this game should be that for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your comments, questions, and funny uh, quips about my horrible gameplay in the comments below. And as, uh, take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.